This tutorial is brought to you by one of the authors of Revising Professional Writing, now in its third edition. My students call me Dr. Kim. The publishers made this video available under a Creative Commons license. For more information, contact ParleyPress.com. Remember, you can use the pause button at any time, and if you see shadows or something weird on the screen, try changing your playback quality settings. Well, the view you see here includes everything you might learn about professional writing in my tutorials. There are others that help you understand content development, organization, style, and mechanics, as well as the rhetorical context that determines which content, organization, or style is going to be effective in a specific situation. Although your primary interest in this tutorial is the message itself, effective content development can only be judged by taking into account the writer's purpose and audience. If you haven't listened to the tutorials on rhetorical context yet, especially the one on audience, you should. This tutorial focuses on one area of content development in professional writing, graphics. We will consider the content of a report on outsourcing written by a consulting company. I've revised the original somewhat to make it more useful for instructional purposes. The quality in the video makes it nearly impossible for you to read on screen. If you're a student using our book, your instructor can provide you with a copy, or you can always download one at proserite.com. The original audience for this report was the consulting company's client, an organization that provides global human resource services. Representatives from other companies might also read it. The vast majority of readers will be non-experts and no more than mildly sensitive to the report's content. That means the writer most needs to provide informative content to make readers ready to accept the message. Graphics is an area in which most professionals have little formal training. I can't make up for that in a short tutorial. However, I can explain three aspects of developing graphic content. Hopefully, I'll also convince you that graphics are critical to the success of that report. Okay, I'll begin with the question of whether content is more effective in prose or graphic form. Your task is to determine whether the audience for this report will get the content of this passage more effectively verbally or visually. Hopefully you see, few people would prefer to read the detailed quantitative results from this passage in prose. Instead, the revised version of the content places those results within a table. You should begin thinking about the value of graphic content as you read workplace documents. Then look for opportunities to use graphics in your own writing. Let's continue by looking at the second aspect of developing graphic content. That's choosing the best type of graphic. The writer of the report originally created a table to present survey data for the audience of service providers. So my question is, is this the best type of graphic for the content? Let me show you a table that should help you answer that question. This describes how common types of graphics meet different reader needs. It says a table will allow the report readers to locate precise values for each provider's survey ratings. But that seems less critical for the readers in this case than comparing values, doesn't it? I have a hard time imagining readers for this kind of a report taking time to read all of the detailed values in the table. So some other form of graphic would likely be more effective in this situation. The second revision presents the survey results in the form of a bar graph. Readers can now perceive the data more globally, with the difference in values for each company shown visually. The third aspect of developing graphic content is designing the graphic. It's important to label units with words. Note that this bar graph has labels for both axes. The horizontal is service providers, with a label for the specific provider at the top of each bar, and the vertical axis is average satisfaction rating, with low and high as well as numerical labels. The writer has also provided a kind of caption below the graphic so that readers know how to interpret its meaning. I do believe there are a couple of additional revisions needed to make this graphic successful. When you're representing two quantitative variables, like in a bar or line graph, scale and proportion are critical. 
The general rule of thumb is to use three units to represent the horizontal axis and two units for the vertical. Does the bar graph here meet that standard? No, the visual scale here is more square than rectangular. So the third revision presents the bar graph in the recommended scale. Note how spreading the horizontal axis results in less severe differences visually among the heights of the bars. The most critical consideration about scale is to be consistent. You could easily mislead readers by using a different scale for similar data. The ability to mislead readers with scale in graphics is one reason the Securities Exchange Commission has been considering policies about the design of graphics when used in disclosure documents. Finally, the writer integrated the graphic into the document by giving it a number see the caption now starts with figure one and by mentioning that graphic by number in the prose so readers know when they should look at it. It's time to check your understanding of developing graphics by reviewing one you haven't seen before. The question asks that you determine if the table is effective and then revise as needed. Pause the recording to review the table from a marketing report on traffic patterns. Think about the effectiveness of the type of graphic for the content and its effectiveness for a workplace audience. If you need to, go back to the table I showed you earlier in this tutorial that tells you about different graphic types. While it might be important to readers to locate precise values in this situation, I believe the revised version providing those values within a pie chart is more effective. The pie chart provides a more visual or global sense of the shape of the data. Note also that the revised version has a caption with a label that can be referred to within the prose of the report. I've explained three aspects of developing graphic content by referring to an outsourcing report written by a consulting company for a client company that provides global human resource services. The readers are moderately ready to accept the report's message. While they're not experts on the content, they shouldn't be more than mildly sensitive to it. Revisions to the type of graphic, its design, and its integration into the report all work to make the audience more knowledgeable. As always, an understanding of the rhetorical context is essential to effectively achieve the writer's purpose in the workplace. For example, Satisfying the reader from one of the top performing companies from the results will be easier than satisfying one from the lowest performing company. And the larger the audience, the more difficult it is to meet everyone's needs. Our tutorials were designed to guide you after something has been written. However, this tutorial on graphics could be used while you're planning what to write. You might use the list of graphic types as a heuristic for thinking about whether your readers need a flowchart to understand a proposal process or a photograph to see the surface detail of a new product. The same is true of the other development tutorials. In my experience, workplace writers struggle far less than student writers in developing enough content for a draft. That's no doubt a consequence of the fact that no one writes in the workplace without some need to communicate a message. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said for students, who are often forced to write without any actual need 